Hi everyone, my name's King Noose Me. <laughs> Usually I ask you guys what episode of whatever show you want to see me talk about, but this time I decided to veto that because it's summertime. No polls in the summertime. I think it's the perfect time to talk about a few episodes from our favorite shows that involve pools and the ocean and water, summer things. It involves summer things. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Haunting Hour episode, Pool Shark. For those of you guys that don't know what the Haunting Hour is, the Haunting Hour is a children's anthology horror show created by the same guy that wrote the Goosebumps books, R.L. Stein. It aired on a now extinct TV channel called The Hub from 2010 to 2014. Pool Shark is one of the most recommended episodes of the Haunting Hour and it's had an odd spike in recommendations lately. Maybe it's because the ocean is fighting back from the horrors it has to endure from the human race destroying it 24 7. Anyways, Pool Shark is the 18th episode of season one. It stars a young Boo Boo Stewart who you probably have seen in a bunch of stuff like Disney's Descendants, the X-Men, and even Twilight. He's also had guest appearances in a bunch of Disney shows. Gotta make that Disney money while you can, am I right? Shows like Good Luck Charlie, Kicking It, and Lab Rats. This episode is directed by Jason Fuwakawa, who also directed the fan favorite mascot episode. Go check that out if you haven't seen that video yet. But yeah, let's quit yapping and get into the episode. We start the episode with a shark run. Oh. It's a toy. It starts at an indoor pool and these kids are playing with this toy shark and they accidentally throw it at our main character, Kai. Kai picks up the toy and then we immediately get to see a not so cryptic, but cryptic backstory. When Kai was little, it looks like he was attacked by a shark or at least almost attacked, but we don't get to see that because we get interrupted by- Hey, that's my shark. Okay, first off, what's the magic word? then maybe you can get your shark back. We also learn in the scene that Kai works here as a lifeguard and his dad is his boss. And while he's busy guarding life, he notices a girl that might need some help. So he tries to help her out, but the dude says 10 words, maybe less. But this is when we meet Alexa. She's played by Mackenzie Porter and is also in an episode called Stage Fright and something called The Purging Anarchy. I tried looking this up, but of course when I look it up, I get The Purge Anarchy and she wasn't in that movie. So I have literally no clue what this is. It might be an internet mystery or something, or maybe I'm just stupid and bad at researching, or it's uh, an error on the fan wiki that maybe somebody should take a look at. Anyways, Alexa is looking for a guy named Cameron and he's coming to help train her to swim. And based on Kai's reaction, I don't think he likes the guy. Right then, Cameron shows up and immediately berates Alexa because he wanted to meet out in front of the rec center, not inside of it. I'm sorry, I thought we said to meet at the rec center, so I- Wouldn't it be common sense to, to wait where you could see the entrance? Yeah, this guy's a piece of shit. Cameron belittles Alexa and he tells her that when you're training with me, everything you do is important inside and out of the water. And he does this in front of Kai, which royally pisses him off. What a, what a, what a what? That's right, Kai, kick his ass. Sadly, Kai is a good guy and decides to just let it go. But Cameron just keeps digging his own grave. And that's another thing. If you want to be a champion, you got to hang with champions. This guy might take Willie's spot in the most hated person in the haunting hour. This guy sucks. But he's not done. He then puts Kai on full blast. I'm not even going to tell you what he says. I'm just going to show you what he says about him. This dude, he's, he's from Hawaii, right? He doesn't know how to swim. Isn't that right, Kai? You're, you're afraid of the water, right? God, I hate him! Of course, Kai knows how to swim. I don't think you're allowed to be a lifeguard if you don't know how to swim. So the Michael Phelps wannabe dares him to jump in the pool. So Kai rips his shirt off. He's kind of ripped to be a 15 year old. He walks up to the water and he's too scared to jump in. I don't need to prove anything to you. Later, we see a little bit of Alexa and Camera's training. And of course he talks to her with no respect at all. He calls her his project and he's only training her to make himself look good. Luckily, he grants her a break from swimming. Come on, we'll stop by the snack bar. Our I'll let you buy me a smoothie. He's broke too? Ah, he is the worst. That night, Kai decides to stay over a little bit and try to overcome his fear of the water. And as he stands there, ready to jump in, he once again gets the flashbacks of the shark attack. But he's older now and stronger. So one foot at a time, he slowly gets into the water. Let's go, baby, my boy did it. Now that he's finally overcome his fear, he dives down into the water and... There's a shark in there? How? 
Wow. Obviously, a panicked Kai swims and gets out of the pool, and the next day, he tries to explain it to his cousin, Michael. He tells Michael what he saw, and Michael surprisingly believes him. That's a first in this show. Michael says that it's Nana Uwe, an old Hawaiian legend. The legend goes that the Shark King fell in love with a strong, beautiful, and graceful woman. The Shark God didn't want to scare her, so he transformed himself into a man. And slowly, the two fell in love and had a child. That child is Nana Uwe. And on land, Nana Uwe is just a regular boy. But in the water, he's a shark. And on the roof, you're a roofer. Ah, yeah, you got us there. For the most part, the story told the legend correctly. The only difference I could find online is Nana Uwe in his human form had the mouth of a shark on his back. I don't know if it was like a literal shark mouth like on his back or just a tattoo. I'd imagine it was just a tattoo, but you never know with these legends. Let me know if you know in the comments below. Also, King Shark from the DC comics, his real name is Nana Uwe. I just think that's cool. Kai's dad doesn't like that his cousin Michael is telling Kai these Hawaiian legends, but of course Michael disagrees with him. He thinks that Kai should know these things because they're the stories of his people, his culture, the stories of where he came from. They're your stories and mine, Kai's too. They're the stories of our people. That night, Kai wakes up in a panic from a nightmare and he finds that his room is completely flooded and he has a visitor. <laughs> Of course, that was the nightmare. Of course, his house wouldn't be flooded. Like, why would they build their house in the middle of the ocean? But because he had that weird dream, he actually wakes up and... <laughs> what? Okay, what's going on right now? He falls into the water and comes face to face with... A shark. What else would he become face to face with? Luckily, that was also a dream. That really hit us with the double inception there. The next day, Kai goes to work and before anybody gets in the pool, he spots the shark fin peeking out one more time. He tries to warn a swim instructor that's about to teach a class that there is a shark in the pool, but of course she doesn't believe him. I mean, realistically, who would believe a guy that there's a shark in a pool? While he's trying to show the instructor the shark, Cameron strangely comes out of the pool like he's been in there for a long time. Of course, Cameron has to come over and then he starts making fun of Kai about the whole shark thing. But I have an issue with the way he says this. What a weirdo you are. What a weirdo you are. What? Speak normally. What are we, in English class? Get out of here. And as Cameron is bullying Kai, Kai finally realizes that the shark in the pool is, in fact, Nana Uwe. Nana Uwe. What a freak you are. Again, with the proper grammar. Get out of here, nerd. What a freak you are. While everyone swims in the pool, Kai tries to keep a close eye on everybody. That's when he hears... <laughs> The little girls that are swimming in the pool start to scream as something swims through their legs. And then finally... Oh, it was just Cameron. Or... Oh... It was Cameron. Later that day, Alexa and Cameron are taking a break, and of course Cameron's just sitting there going on and on about how great he is at swimming and tries to get her to feel his rib cage. It's almost like he has gills there or something. Because he's a great swimmer, of course. It's not like he'll have actual gills there like he's a shark or something. <laughs> Thankfully, Cameron has to go somewhere. But before he leaves, he has to pick on Kai a little bit. He's just the worst guy. He's just the worst guy. Alexa offers Kai a seat next to her, and then Kai finally asks the big question. How can you stand that guy? That's what I'm saying! Alexa tries to talk to Kai about his extreme fear of the water and sharks, and tells him that the pool shark theory isn't very... Possible. This is when Kai finally explains his fear. When he was seven years old and still living in Hawaii, he was having a nice day at the beach and everybody was swimming in the water. Then suddenly everybody started to panic and shouting shark. But Kai was just too little and he couldn't swim away fast enough. He called out for help, but nobody came to his aid. So he dove into the water and he saw the shark coming right for him. Luckily, his dad reached in and grabbed him before the shark could eat him. Now Kai believes that the shark he's been seeing is Nana Uwe, and he's coming for him because he's the one that got away. And he believes this with all his heart. Alexa wants to believe Kai, but she just can't. It's too fantastical, it's not realistic. And she tells him that later tonight, she's gonna be training in the pool after hours. Of course, Kai tries to stop her, but she tries to make him feel a little bit better by saying, If you're so worried, then maybe you can slay the monster before it devours me. Yeah, I don't think that worked. Back at home, Kai makes a makeshift spear out of a knife and a broom pole so he can slay Nana Uwe before it gets him. And all is going well until... What do you plan to do with that? His dad catches him. And I don't blame his dad for being concerned. If I walked in on my son making a makeshift spear out of a butcher knife and a broomstick, I would probably be a little worried. The dad strangely doesn't ask too many questions and lets Kai go to the pool with his makeshift spear. So Kai takes his spear to the pool and waits patiently for for Nana Uwe to appear. And it doesn't take long either. Kai decides it's a smart idea to get into the water to get a little bit closer to the shark, which was a big mistake. The shark instantly targets Kai and... 
takes him under. And the episode ends with the water sitting still and a shark fin poking out. And then another one. Wait, we still have five minutes. The episode didn't end right there. The sharks circle each other and then slowly swim to the edge of the pool to reveal... It was them in the water. That's right, both Kai and his dad are Nana Uwe. His dad says it's not just one person, but a clan of people. And these people are born with a special gene to turn into a shark. And sadly, his cousin Michael didn't get this gene, doesn't know that they're Nana Uwe, and Kai is not allowed to tell him either. Kind of sad, honestly. So earlier in the episode, it was just his dad swimming in the water. And when he was there by himself, it was literally him transforming and he saw his own shadow. Being scared of your own shadow is a very funny way of explaining that whole thing. And I know what you're thinking. Why didn't he tell Kai before? He didn't want to tell Kai because he didn't know if Kai had the gene. They kind of have to confirm before they tell him. Yeah, so dragging your son into the water as a shark is the best way to find out if he's also a shark. What if he wasn't? Would you have just ate him? Is that what was happened? They also have to control their urge to eat humans because, you know, humans are sharks main food source. What? It'd make more sense if Kai was like eating sushi all the time or something, something like raw fish. Anyways, we get a little bit more lore about Kai's life. His mom is absent from this episode because she passed away before they moved to Minnesota. And his dad says, Only a special woman can love the Nana Uwe. They spread her ashes in the waters of Hawaii, and whenever they go back and swim in the ocean there, they can feel her spirit all around them. Kind of sweet, honestly. This is when Alexa comes in for her nightly training. And Kai's dad is a fucking homie, by the way. He just gives Kai a smirk, smacks him on the arm, gets up, and leaves. I didn't know the Nana Uwe was chill like that, though. Kai and Alexa get about two seconds before fucker... I mean, Cameron appears. And of course he tries to bully Kai and make him leave. What are you doing here? Take off. But Alexa is tired of his shit. You know what, Cameron? Maybe you should take off. Oh shit, she got his ass. This shatters Cameron's fragile ego. And he literally says he was only training her to have fun with her. Listen. You're never gonna make it as a swimmer. You know, I just thought I might have some fun with you. You're not even worth my time. Bruh. And that doesn't bode well with Kai, obviously. So Kai challenges him to a swim race for $500. And of course, Cameron takes this offer because Cameron's broke. He's also the fastest swimmer in their town and maybe the state. He tries to intimidate Kai one last time by calling him Sharkbait, but Kai kind of likes this nickname. I like that name, Sharkbait, for somebody. Wait, was that a threat? Kai lets Cameron have a small head start, then he jumps in right after him, and I think you know what happens next. Yes, you saw that right. Kai eats Cameron in front of Alexa, and she kind of liked it. That's weird. If I ask you to take me for a ride, Will you devour me? Huh? You just watched him eat a guy. Now you're gonna ride him like a, a horse? What? Not like that. Well, she gets her wish, and that's where the episode ends. I actually quite enjoy this episode of The Haunting Hour. It's a little bit goofier. It's more of an out there idea, but they made it work. I love that it's a retelling of an old Hawaiian legend that I didn't know about, and because I didn't know about it, I was like, is the Nana Uwe a real thing? I looked it up. I learned the original story. Booyah. That's how history is told. Honestly, I'm surprised that they haven't told this legend earlier. I'm surprised there's not like a movie about it. It's so cool. I think this is a solid episode, but if it had a little bit of a bigger budget, Budget, I think it could have been one of the best episodes in the series. And if they were allowed to show blood, if they were allowed to show blood, it would make it a lot better. At the first watch through, you kind of don't notice it, but the more you watch the episode, you kind of tell that they're using stock footage of sharks every time you see a shark on screen. And then it kind of pulls you out of it. You're like, you're invested and then this happens. I mean, I guess it looks fine, but sometimes it's it's a little too obvious that they use stock footage. Also, do you guys think that Kai's dad maybe gave him the fear of sharks? Because when he was a kid, he dove down into the water, saw a shark face to face, and then his dad pulled him out. So maybe his dad was the shark and just was transformed and thought nobody would see him. I don't know. Just a theory, just maybe his dad gave him the fear, trying to see if his son would transform then and there, maybe. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Also, let me know what you think about the episode in the comments below. I have a Patreon. The $5 members get episodes a day early, plus some bonus content and maybe some pictures of my cats and your name right here. <gasps> Crazy. Like the video if you liked the video. Thank you for watching the video all the way through. I appreciate you all and peace.
I just want you guys to know I bought a whole thing to go do it in my community pool and then I got too nervous. <laughs> Didn't want to do it in public.